Oh. Hey, we haven't we haven't a, had a good crazy Mitch. Yeah, we need a crazy Ooh. bastard. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Come on, Mitch. Mm. Take us mm. out. Vinny, save kiss? No. But did family jewels? We discussed this week on three sides of the coin. I'm your host, Mitch. Mm -hmm. Who is that guy? He keeps sneaking in on the internet. God. He's been drinking bar beta carotene. Look, he's all orange. Oompa loompa doompa die. <laughs>Everybody, welcome to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. I'm one of your co-hosts, one of your three co-hosts, Michael Branvold. I'm joined by Tommy Summers, and we're going to go straight in and do the illustrious introduction of Mitch LaFon. That wasn't very the loud. The only host that matters. Yeah! How's that? Better? So, so I w you know, Tommy, I thought about hitting the record button... Um, 45 minutes ago when we started this whole <laughs> ordeal so everybody could see and oh. laugh at us about the shit we go through to try and record this. So if you're really observant, Tommy's got a different background behind him today. Because the other he's, side of my he's office. sitting on the other side of his office because he started on where he normally is and his Skype didn't work. He's got a new computer. Skype didn't work. So he jumped over to his old computer, which he's on now. Skype works fine. Yet there was no lighting. <laughs> it was like totally dark. So, which is a good look for him. <laughs> he, he then proceeded to go over to his old spot, crawl under the table, disconnect these construction lamps. <laughs> Pull, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm watching all this going, man, if you could only see the shit we go through to just try and record a Skype conversation. I know, it's I, unbelievable, we actually, isn't it? We signed on 55 minutes ago. We did. And we're just starting. Honest to God, we should be wrapping up right now, and yet we're just starting. Because 55 yeah. minutes ago, we tried to get this started and dealing with Skype not working and bad lighting. And it's just the no-budget show. We just, I love it. Well, you got to take it as it rolls, I suppose. So, yeah, this one's on me. <laughs> kind of like watching VH1. Yeah. Ooh. Well, have you seen the metal show? It's kind of like watching a Kiss show sometimes. Hey, only the Vinny ones. Oh. Yeah. It's like being at a Wicked Lester concert. Hey. hey. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know about that, and I'm sure most people will never know about that. You got a point. Um. So... Uh, it's been a full week now since uh, our, our episode with um, Andy went live. Because yes. when we chatted about it last week, it had just gone live that morning. So in the first week, we've had 6,700 views. That many? In one wow. week. Awesome. And more importantly, there Thanks, have been Mom. so many great <laughs> yeah. comments from KISS fans who were like, they totally got what we were doing. You know, that it was a discussion with a young KISS fan, a different point of view. But I thought it was so cool that so many of them were also like, well, what, what do you recommend I listen to? What do you, I want to go find some Black, Black Veil Brides. What should I listen to? Um, or they had listened to it and they thought it was pretty cool. So it was really kind of cool to see that a lot of KISS fans got it and then checked out some new music. Mm -hmm. and, and that it's not all about... Kiss is the only thing, and if it isn't Kiss, it sucks. Well, 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 back up. Kiss is the only thing, but it's nice to add in BBB. No, they're not the only thing. <gasps> oh, Mitchie. Oh, Mitchie, Mitchie, Mitchie. <sighs> but I will for the fun of it. I don't know if you saw the comment, Tommy. Somebody posted a comment that, that they said, we officially jumped the shark with that episode. <laughs> now, I sort of take that as a compliment. Yeah. That means we're getting into Vince, our own. That's sort of like us being called. That means Peterson I'm the Fonz. That's right. Yeah, it is. Uh, although although yeah. I, I replied to him and I said, "Well, that's cool, but could you tell me exactly why we jumped the shark?" And he's never bothered to reply back. So I just want to know which one of us is the Fonz. That would be you, Mitch. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I'm Chachi. 
That means you worked with Vinny Vincent on some music <laughs> years ago. Well, what about oh, the Fonz? Didn't he do something too? On Happy uh, Days? Wait, was, I don't know, did he? Was Vinny with for Joni Meets Cha uh, Joni Joni Loves Chachi or did he write for Happy Days or both? I don't the know. The question was, is, does anybody give a rat's ass? No. Okay, no. So let's, so let's get on. into let's, let's more move on from kiss. that. So anyway, um, comments TV. have been cool. I mean, I love I love reading that stuff. It's very cool that people have checked out Black Veil Brides. I just emailed Andy today to let him know how many um, views it's had and, and a lot of the, the response. He's out on the road with uh, Warp Tour right now. Um, but How was that? Did you go on answer. Saturday? Uh, I had to back out at the last minute because I fucked up royally and forgot I had made a dinner arrangement. And I completely forgot it, so I had, oh, that's to, too bad. I had to stick with the dinner arrangement and back out on going to see Andy. But hopefully he'll come back on a... Uh, you know, another regular tour. Well, they just cool. announced uh, the Monster Rock Energy Tour, I think, with Bullet for My Valentine. Yeah, anyway, I saw they're coming, that. Yeah. They're no, coming no, to Montreal in November. So. No San Francisco show yet, but hopefully there'll be some more. There will be. Cool. It was an initial press release, so. Yeah. So the other big news of the last week was the live Kiss concert. Yes, sir. On Access TV, the, the Zurich, Switzerland show. Mm -hmm. um, I watched it. I was able to. Thankfully, we've got access on Comcast here, so I was able to watch it and DVR it. I've actually watched it three or four times. Um, you guys caught part of it. What do you guys think? Yeah. Well, we don't get it up here in Canada, or at least not on my satellite provider. So I had to YouTube it, so I don't think I got the same experience. But listen, it's live Kiss. I like it. I, I don't know if people are going to say Paul's voice... It's live kiss. Works for me. It's really that simple. Well, Tommy, we knew that was going to be Mitch's response. Yeah, oh, no shit. <laughs> I, I didn't like it. Sorry, Why? everybody. I mean, uh, I thought that it was, and, and also in all fairness, I did not watch the whole thing. I just, uh, after the first song, I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I That's thought a it good was. good sound effect. That was. Yeah, it was slow and plodding, and I don't know. It just didn't do anything for me at all. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to criticize it, but at the same time, I can't really tell you exactly why. I just was like, ugh. I'm um, torn right down the middle. I thought it looked phenomenal. It did. I mean, it was fucking amazing. Oh, oh yeah. The, the intro was amazing. Gene's blood spitting was I, I I did a little capture of that and posted it on the yeah, Facebook that. page and it was just like literally the twelve year old in me was like, Oh, that's so cool. Well, and in all fairness, I need to watch the rest of it. I'm just <sighs> But I don't know. what re what really tears me up and this still goes back to I don't know if I'd go see them if they came. Paul's vocals were not as bad as they've been in the past, but there was definitely some moments where I was just like, Oh, but what really, really turned me off was his stage raps. And the divide oh the crowd God. and all that? No, no, not even that. When he introduced Say Yeah, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you, I've never heard this intro before, but he started with boom, 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 like boom, 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 boom. And I was like, what the fuck is this? I mean, it was an embarrassment to watch it on television. And then the other one was when he introduced Tommy. And he had the crowd going... Did he call Mace? No, no, no. He's like, come on, let me hear you say, it's Tommy. And the crowd, and he'd go, Tommy, Tommy. And it was just like, what the fuck is with these, these stage raps? I mean... The, the crowd splitting, you know that's going to happen, but that's kind of uh, okay. You know, it's like move, but boom, 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 boom. What is it? Bam, 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 bam. That's what I was thinking. I was on, I was just like, oh, this is just, this is the type of stage rap that a garage band has for their very first show when they play their first bar. It was that bad yeah i just I and, and, and that that really was just like 
cringing for me. It was just like, oh. Yeah. And that's kind of how it was. Yeah. And I don't get that. Just, you know, I don't understand. And it's not just Kiss. Other rock bands, too. Just come out and talk to the people that are there to see your show. Because I've been to a lot of concerts where that's what happens. And the crowd loves it. You know, just even if it's a silly story about something that happened to you this week on the road or whatever, it just, I don't know. I agree with you. That would just make me cringe. I haven't even gotten that far yet. It was so yeah, beyond. That, it was so beyond silly. It was just bad, bad. Well, listen. The, the The great thing about having watched it on YouTube is that I could take out all the solos. It made for a great show that way. It really did. It was, you know, instead of having seventy five minutes of show, you get sixty minutes of show. But at least it's all songs. It's a great way to do it. I mean, the set uh, list. The, the set list wasn't bad. Um, I don't think the shock me out of this world flows well. I think you brought that. No, up, it doesn't Mitch. work. It just it doesn't, doesn't work. It feels like it it's doesn't very fit, contrived. fit together too well. One it's song like, or the other. It's it's as if Tommy was driving along and then didn't see a stop sign, slams on his brakes, and then <laughs> starts up again. It, it it it's not. It it could work, but they need to work out the kinks. It's. The way they're cutting it at the place they're cutting it is not doing it. it yeah, it doesn't flow. It's sort of ruining two songs rather than give you one great song. It's it's strange, but at least they attempted something new. I'll give them credit for that, but it's not flying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the 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 the, the concert was just in your face. It was you know the stage was great. The lighting was amazing pyro everything about that part of it looks great it's just it, i don't know it feels like they just weren't quite as good as their stage show yeah you know and and, and, and i sent you guys that that review that some fan sent us from hellfest right oh his, yeah his, his his take was sort of the same way Mm-hmm. yeah i thought that was a really interesting thing that he had written so i i don't know i mean I'm still, I'm still torn. If I would go see him, if they came through, I just don't know. I'm going go. three times this summer. Mm-hmm. I'll still go because I want to. Because again, it's like that old thing that I was saying with the Van Halen. It, it's a different experience when you're physically there than when you're watching it on TV. I would probably say the same thing about a Van Halen show right now on television that I did about that. So I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, and I'm still going to go. You know, yeah. buy a ticket. I'm going let, to three. Let, let me know what you think of the boom, boom, boom intro. I'll go the lights. Well, and on a, on a lighter <laughs> note, too, I want to mention to people that the Go-Go's are now playing rock and roll all night on their tour. Uh, yeah, I saw right. that. Are they playing that in as like an encore or just part of the regular set? I'm not really sure. I'm guessing it's probably one of their encores or towards the end of the show would be yeah, my guess. Yeah, we posted that video. On, we posted a video of that on TSC about a month ago or three weeks ago. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't see that. Isn't that no, interesting, I just though? Gene well, Weedland. Tom, Tommy, we know you've hidden all of Mitch's posts. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I did. <laughs> you caught me. I'm busted. Yeah, so, you know, listen, um, again, watching Kiss on TV is, is not the same as being there. We've talked about this either here or on Dropping the Needle about the concert experience is more than just the band on stage. It's the smell, the noise, the crowd reaction, the popcorn. The, I mean, the whole thing makes for the concert experience. And, and that's what KISS sells. KISS, you know, they're a visual band for a reason. It, was, it became the music as the years progressed. But when they started, it was, look at us. We're different than everybody else. And that's hard to translate sometimes on TV. KISS oh, no, doesn't I, do well in two dimensions. No, I mean, they've always said they're bigger than television, which is true. Right. But right. You know, and I'm not complaining about the show one bit. It's it's basically two things that just I cringed over. Well, that's yeah. fair. But I've Again, cringed over mind. Paul's raps for a long time, and and if he's having vocal problems, I'll say it over and over again. Quit their vocal raps. Let Gene talk between songs. Let Tommy say something. Or say nothing at all. Or, or did you guys see the video from one of the backstage meet and greets where he was singing Nowhere to Run? Nowhere to Run, yeah. And, and Gene turns to him and says, save your voice? Yeah, that's not good. 
That's just Gene getting the lyrics wrong to save your love. He was going, save your voice, save, you know, he always screwed well, up the yeah, lyrics. because he screwed up the lyrics to um, Shout It Out Loud, didn't he, on the broadcast? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't but, even but pay see, that's a that. given. We, you know, we, that's yeah. almost part of the show. But at least David Lee Roth does it, the, you know, funny. I forgot the right. words, you know, and everyone cheers. So, what do you do? Or you can just do like Vince Neil and just sort of do phonetics. Mm -hmm. That works. <laughs> Seems to work for him. Why not? All right. So, uh, overall, uh, it was fun to have Kiss on a broadcast. I mean, it's, hey, those are my toys. You're stealing his thunder, man. Now Give watch, it back. Watch this. Ah! Without the wig. I mean... <laughs> That's not nice. I didn't make the toy. They come with removable wigs. You know, I bought those, those exact toys for my boy because he likes to play with Legos, which they look like. And I don't know what he did with them. I think he's managed to destroy them or throw them out because I can't see them anywhere in the house. If you're under three years old or a real dumb fan, you could choke on. Right. You could swallow these pieces. You. Bad. So, what do you think the age warning is then on that? I don't know. I threw it out. Probably th three and five, under. Five and under, maybe. Thirty. You have to be. 30? You have to be careful though, because you've got a baby coming, so you got to start hiding all that stuff. Mm hmm That's the greatest thing about having a kiss collection and then having young kids. Everything I saved over the year in boxes and in the packaging, one day ended up being all unpackaged and in the living room. And, and they so said, "Dad, why do you have all this crap?" Well, my stuff is already packed up, and I just got to go get the first box and bring it up here to start selling it. Right. So, you know. I'm going to start with my T-shirts. I've got like 300 Kiss T-shirts. Wow. And I'm going to start selling them off. They're the what? easiest ones to sell because they're all the same size, same weight, easy to ship. Yep. eBay them. It's like I did with my CD collection. Perfect. I want that stuff. So, what are our fabulous topics of the day? Topics, topics du, jour. du jour. Du jour? Du jour. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What are we talking about? I can't remember anymore. Be careful if you don't come up with something real quick. Mitch is going to take over and give us a topic. Oh, God. Um, um, <laughs> um. <laughs> come on, Tommy. God, what are we talking about? I'm at a loss. I'm still working on lighting here. I'm still thinking about that from today. Uh, we had a lot of great topics. Well, hey, I know. Mitch, why don't you give us an update on um, the uh, CD? Where are tribute we at CD. with that? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, the Kiss Tribute CD. You know, just this afternoon, the mastered version showed up. You know, you got to do something with the artwork, though. That looks a little... Yeah, that looks yeah. kind of cheap. That, that looks like Brett Michaels-style artwork. Yeah, well... Oh, God. His artwork is, is fabulous. No, but finally, uh, you know, Scott Hall over at Masterdisc, he's, he's handled albums by Sting, Bruce Springsteen, Dave Matthews Band, Lou Reed, Bob Dylan, and uh, Triumph, and the list goes on. He mastered this for me, and uh, they sent it over. Now, he didn't send me this disc. They sent me, obviously, files through the computer or via, you know, email. Album sounds great. It's nice to hear everything at the same level nice everything has punch to it it's a fantastic mastering job and and what that means now is uh, later this week so we're uh, June 25th today so later this week it'll head over to the um, manufacturer we're just waiting on the artwork to be finished and these should all get pressed and printed and ready to go within three weeks maximum we have to wait a week for the artwork but other than that, two weeks two weeks from now, or two weeks so, after we have the artwork, it's it's good to go. So by the, the very latest, the middle of July. Yeah, right now okay. it looks like middle of July is uh, very attainable. Uh, you know, I, I still have the official release that is August twenty seventh, but I'm not going to hold on to them for any reason. But I'm also not going to promise to deliver them early because in case there's a some kind of screw up at manufacturing. You know, they, they, they send it back and there's a big defect or they skip the song or we have to redo the whole order because the booklets are... I mean, I've done this before. Things Somebody's do go wrong. get removed. 
Yeah, people's guitars get excised without prior knowledge, which is always fabulous. <laughs> That's kind of a tough one to explain, I bet. Yeah, but you know the and um, so if if this is a perfect world, I could probably start shipping these out by like August first at, at the very latest. So it's okay. it's it's a very exciting thing because the music portion of this is done now, Good. and the well, paperwork portion's done. So now we're just into the. Please don't screw up the manufacturing. Please don't screw up the manufacturing phase. Well, and when we were talking last week, you were still stressing because you were waiting on two, I think, maybe three tracks to come in. Did everything show up and you have everything you need now? Everything showed up, but about eight hours after deadline, which made life very sort of stressful. But we we got them there and and everything's happy. Uh, There is one thing I'd like to mention, if I could, and it's maybe inappropriate or whatever. It's that I just wish people remember this is a tribute CD for a cancer charity. If you pick it up, please don't stick it on a torrent site. You know, oh, yeah. for one thing, if you have to buy one thing, just just spend the twenty bucks or whatever. Don't don't send it around to your friends because that's not the purpose. The purpose is to help out a home that's helping people that are passing away and dying. And I know I don't. I know it sounds like I'm playing the sympathy card, but you know, if you could be a little bit respectful out there, don't send it to all your friends for free. Just pick this one up. Please. Fair. Is that, is that inappropriate to say? No. No, no not, at, not all. at all. I mean, especially since it's going to charity, it's not going to the record labels. Yeah, and it's not going to my pockets either, and it's not going to the artist's pockets. It's really going to this home to help people to pay for beds, to pay for nurses, to pay for syringes, to pay for medication, to pay for x ray machines. Yeah, bad, bad, bad. So, so if people could, please don't, don't stick it on storage sites. Not this one. Fair. That's all. I think Fair that's enough. reasonable. Is this Tommy? Yeah. And, I, and I think, listen, I think people so. had bargained for a single CD, 12 to 15 songs. I've delivered 40. 40 for 40. I, I've given you a little something. Just give me something back by not putting it out on all the RIP sites. Fair deal? Fair deal. I think that's well said. And it's, it's reasonable to, to request that. Yeah. Now the other exciting thing is Brighton Rock have done a uh, video for Creatures of the Night, and I know none of you have seen it yet, but um, that's going to be finished, uh, and all the all the shooting's done. Now it's just a, qued- a question of post editing, adding in still pictures and color correction and all that stuff. But that will hit the fabulous world of YouTube probably within the next two weeks, and so uh, it's moving along. And uh, all afternoon, I've been working on a tour with uh, four of the artists uh, on the album that are going to form a super group. And uh, I don't want to spill the beans just yet, though this is going to go out next Tuesday, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Oh, well, then, uh, listen, um, we're going to have Rex Brown of Pantera, uh, Bumblefoot of Guns N' Roses, Brian Tishy, who's played with Foreigner, Whitesnake, and Queensryche. And Mark Zavon, who's, uh, uh, I was going to say teammates, but he, he's in the band Kill Devil Hill with uh, Rex. And uh, they're going to go out and do All of Alive 2 from uh, top to bottom as a tribute. And it's going to be tied into the, the disc. The press release is going to mention the disc. At the show, they're going to either sell the disc or sell something that's going to raise funds for it or take a portion of a t-shirt or whatever. And uh, it's going to be a very cool show. Including live this side four, yeah, wonderful. Now that is worth the price of admission. And uh, you know, Ron uh, Bumblefoot sounds like Paul Stanley, and Rex Brown sounds like Gene Simmons. So they're going to swap vocals all night long. Very cool. And you know, depending on what city they're in, there's been talk like while they're in New York, maybe Tony Harnell will come out and do Love Gun like he did on the album, and when they're in San Francisco or in San Diego, whoever lives there that was on the album might come out and do a song or two or three or whatever. And so it's gonna be it's gonna be a great little party. And, they should uh, name the they should name the band Fanboy. Ha uh, ha. Well, they want to name it something else. I'll, I'll let that be the mystery for next okay. week. But uh, I know I've seen, it's got a ring. Mitch's fanboys. Fan no, boy. but it's gonna be fun. You know, you're here. You are. You're gonna go to a, your local, uh, you know, bar, tavern, pub, whatever. 
You're going to have the dude from Pantera, or the guys from Pantera, and the guy from um, Guns N' Roses playing for you and doing all these great Kiss songs. I mean, they're going to run through the whole thing. That's fantastic. I think that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. And, you know, they're going to keep the prices low and all that. They're, they're doing the best that, you know, tickets are going to be nice and inexpensive. They're not going to be 75 or $95. You're going to go have a nice, fun evening and listen to Kiss played by these diehard, dedicated fans. In fact, we should probably fantastic. invite them all on the show and talk about not only this, but their dedication to Kiss. You think? Yeah. Yeah. I think Although someone will complain and say, what are they doing on there? Oh, shit. What is there? What do they got to do with Kiss? Well, yeah. Well, just but kudos this is a, to all this of you that sh- get it. Uh, seriously, this is a show about the whole Kiss universe. It's not all about just Kiss. I mean, well, you know, it's, and, it's a show about three Kiss fans getting together and talking, and we bring a fourth Kiss fan in and keep talking, and all of a sudden people okay. don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's no different than if we, if the three of us were in the same city together and we're meeting up at Champs. You know, for dinner or wherever, and then we find out that so and so's in town, and we invite him over to sit with us. That's exactly what it is. Like you would invite another guy over to hang out into this discussion, and it all is valid because everyone has their own point of view, and it's all about the band. And I just don't understand why some people just have no clue. You have to show your Kiss Army membership card at the door before you can get on the show. That's the well, only listen. requirement. Mm-hmm. I can appreciate those fans. They they just want more us. Who doesn't want more us? Um, that's accurate. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, God. I don't know. What are we going to do with him? He's starting early, isn't he? Yes. I, he really I, I myself would, would love to have Bumblefoot sit in with us. He sat in with I us would. on the. I, I would uh, definitely love it. I think he would be a perfect fit. He's a Kiss fan. That's all that fucking matters. He's a Kiss fan. I, I agree. I totally agree. And he yeah. sat in with us on Dropping the Needle and ran through all of Boston's first album and he played along with it and sang along to the whole thing. We could probably convince him to do all of a live two for us right here. <laughs> so Or we could just talk to him. Well yeah. That too. Yeah. But it would be fun. So I agree. So the update on the uh, KISS Tribute CD is that uh, we have completed sort of stage one and stage two, and now we're working on to stage three, which is getting them manufactured, and stage four is getting them delivered. And it's it's not too late for people to pledge? Mm-mm. No, not at all. You can go to the uh, pledgemusic.com site. Uh, they're going to keep it open until August 27th. After that, the album becomes sort of my property, and then I have to sort of get it into stores and retail and all that. But if you want to avoid trying to find it in your local Walmart and want to just get it when it's ready, get it while it's hot, as they say, um, you know, head over to pledgemusic.com, look up Kiss 40th in their little search box. It'll pop right up, and uh, you'll get 40 songs done by 40 great artists for Kiss's 40th anniversary. Well, then you have other items that tie into the whole thing, too. Hey, was that, that Peter Chris? Yeah, it was. <laughs> He's been hanging out with me. I, can I ask you one thing that I saw today on, on our Facebook page? I think it was our Facebook page. Somebody posted, maybe you, you know or don't know, that the reason Kiss doesn't use the Eric Carr makeup in uh, merchandise and all that is because they said that Vinnie Vincent had actually purchased or owns that trademarked for the, for the Eric Carr makeup. That, you ever heard that? I've, is that true? Is that I've crazy? Heard that, I've heard that rumor f- as long as Tommy's heard the rumor about Vinny's extracurricular movie activities. Right. And? And it's bullshit. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, Which I part? would think... <laughs> Let the fans figure that one out. I would think it's just a question of branding. I mean, it, it probably confuses the market if so, all of a sudden you have a fifth brand or a fifth trademark running around in there. That's I mean, the I look at it. if Vinny owns the rights to Eric Carr's makeup, then why doesn't he own the rights to his own makeup? Why would he get a cease and desist from Kiss when he tried to wear it at a Kiss convention? Yeah, that's a good question. So he doesn't own his either then? No. Kiss made it. Well, true, but... You never know. Maybe they were so desperate to get him in the band that these... Who knows? I mean, desperate I, I, to get him to sign the contract, which he refused to sign. Which, here, actually, I was thinking about this. Move, move, Peter. That might, move, that Peter. Might, 
That might be true, though. Remember, Kiss had a, a, a tour booked, and they needed a guy in there. So, But listen. Somebody brought this up as an interesting point. So here's the loophole of why Vinnie Vincent will not show up at the Kiss 40th anniversary. Because Vinnie was never a member of Kiss. That's true. He was just a hired gun. Tech he he was paid, but he technically never signed a contract and never became a member of KISS. So, so then, is, no. uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure Eric Singer has signed that. That was part of the agreement for him to come back sort of in 2003, 2004, as far as I have understood it. Is Tommy a, a member of KISS, or is he just a hired no, gun? Not, I'm not saying member as in full share member. No, 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 but there, there is sort of a... No, I mean, they're not equal they're partners. They're on contract. They've signed contracts. What the contract says, I have no fucking clue. Okay. Well, yeah, nobody could. But the point is, Vinny never signed his contract, so he was never in KISS. Technically. Technically. Everybody else, Bruce, Eric, Eric, Tommy, Mark. Mark. They, they, all, all, signed. they all signed contracts. Huh. So then, if he never signed a contract, why does he keep suing for breach of contract? Well, if he's lost 14 lawsuits, why does he keep suing for anything? And if he's suing to get money, don't you think he could have saved a bunch of money on those 14 lawyers and 14 lawsuits? Anyway, it's, it's a whole very... I still would love to sit down and talk to Vinny and, and, and maybe get some answers. I mean, it might be a, a big, you know... Cluster F because he might go, just give us nonsense. Go over but the Kiss FAQ and chat with the Sphinx. That's Vinny. Okay. I just don't know why we're talking about this. I mean, I. All right. Well. Spun I out of control. Care. I was just bringing up the fun little fact that actually Vinny is not a member of Kiss. So therefore, right. as in the loophole of the farewell tour. Which you're going to get reamed for now. Yeah. Fine, ream me, guys. You know, the, the farewell tour That's was... That's a drop. Was, <laughs> stop looking, Mitch. I've got no Vaseline here. The kids took it downstairs. Oh, that sounded wrong. Okay, but go on. <laughs> it's, like, it's like they're pouring out the booze if you drank too much. Right. They're, they're trying to stop you from whatever it is that you do. Now, what were we saying about the farewell tour? Uh, the, remember the press release on the farewell tour was, this is the farewell to the original four members. Right. Which it was. There's your technical loophole. That's why we're not on the farewell tour now, because it's not the original four members anymore. And they're not saying goodbye. It was the farewell. That was the last tour of the original four members. <laughs> it was, the, it was the dot, dot, dot parentheses that you didn't see on the marquee. It said farewell to Peter and Ace. It was, that, it was the in that fine, little... The fine print up on the marquee. Yeah, they, they couldn't get into the poster. It said, Kids Farewell Tour, and that, that little part over here, people just didn't bother printing. But we still have... It's, we still don't have the longest farewell tour. Remember, the Who's Farewell Tour started in 81. Ozzy's Farewell Tour started in 92. But, but maybe those so, were farewell to the original members, too. The Who is not the original members anymore. But they weren't the original members when they made the farewell tour. Keith mm -hmm. Moon was, was already long passed There's away. There's a little but, technicality in the way things are worded. But John was there. But Ozzy's No More Tours tour in 91 or 92... Well, what happened I mean, he to was the Scorpions? Only one that... I thought they were retiring. Oh, yeah, and Judas Priest, too. Yeah, you see, what happens when you go on a farewell tour is that you make a lot of money, and then you go, hey, wait a minute. We, we like making quit. a lot of money. Well, why are we quitting? Money or is... during that farewell tour right after it, somebody in the band gets a divorce. Right. And then you need to go back out on tour to earn some money to take care of what you just paid off in a divorce. That sounds Honest like a Honest to God, tour. there's been a lot of farewell tours that happened because... Yeah, and it's divorces. farewell to my wife. That's, That's what exactly it is. That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> yeah. I just said farewell to half my money. Let's go mm -hmm. on tour. <laughs> God. And Tommy, you had a, an interesting subject that you wanted to talk about before your camera broke down and you had to crawl under a desk and find new lighting. Um, which, oh, look, there's Peter again. Hey. He, she must be feeling better. He. 
Um, well, are we talking about the the family jewels thing? Is that what you're talking about, or what what are you talking about? Yeah, we're talking about Mitch's jewels. No, but but Tommy had a point about family jewels. I don't know if you want to talk about it or not. We certainly could. Well, I mean, we can. I, I just wanted to pose the question to people, you know, and America, are you okay with me running with this? Run. Run as fast okay. as you can and don't look back. Okay. <laughs> um, some, I had a conversation with a, a good friend of mine over the weekend, and he mentioned something that I thought was, you know, reasonable to bring up, and that is... Do you think that um, the <laughs> there he is the family the, this TV series Family Jewels, regardless of what it was, but just the fact that Gene was on TV on a weekly basis, and you saw Kiss and you saw Gene, you, it got put together, gave them some extra latitude to continue to build the brand of Kiss. Had that not happened, do you think they would be where they are now? Because my friend believes, and I'm not going to say that he's wrong, is that the numbers were pretty dismal um, before this hit, after kind of the reunion thing was over. And this kind of breathed some new life into it in the same way that look at how Aerosmith's act, asking price now has gone up after Steven Tyler was on uh, American Idol for a couple of years. Did this well, really help the them? Uh, sorry, I was just gonna say. I think the most, the more direct comparison is, did it do the same for for Kiss as it did for Ozzy and the Osbourne show? Because Ozzy's Osbourne show really took a bounce after the Osbournes came out. I mean, all of a sudden he wasn't the scary old devil witch guy. He was the fun-loving Ozzy, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, what do you think, Mike? Uh, I I, I think, don't know. I think it. it it definitely put the KISS brand out there, and I'm sure it helped. Is it solely responsible? I think that's ridiculous to think anything could be solely responsible because I think there's a lot of other factors that were happening in the KISS world. And yeah, other let, let's name some of them. So, well, and I agree with that. So, so, so when, 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 when did Family Jewels start? What year? So we can tie that to a specific point in history. That's a good question. I think it was 206, but why don't we uh, quickly Wikipedia that? I can't Let believe me. you don't know that. I think it's 206. Yeah, yeah here it goes. It says premiered on August 7th, 206. Okay, huh. no, that's, that's fair. So 2005... Was Rock the Nation tour wrong? Two thousand four, two thousand four, two thousand four into two thousand five. Was that Rock the Nation era? When well, was Aerosmith? Let's, let's, let's go even further Aerosmith back. Aerosmith was two thousand three. Three. Okay. Aerosmith was two thousand three. The switch from Ace to Eric to Tommy to all that all happened in that. It was a definite, um, you know, deflating of the cake, if you want, in that period where fans went, "Ugh, here they go again, changing members." And then Rock the Nation, 2005 was nothing. I mean, I think they did three shows that year. And then 2006, it put that sort of Kiss name back out in the forefront. See, I think part of what they also were contending with is over overexposure. Meaning prior to that, it was almost like every summer you were seeing a Kiss tour. Right. Except 2005, where they only did like three or four shows. So, Which, so, so could you say that by the time 2006, 2007 rolled around, people were starting to get the I want to see Kiss Bug again because it had been a few years. Just because they hadn't toured. I mean, I sort of, if you think about it, Kiss is getting to that point again right now. They just right. toured last summer with Monster, with the tour. Right. So, well, they're not doing there, a is, ton is, of it this year, no, are they? Not. Really? And I think, I think, I think that's probably on purpose. I would think you're not coming back through the the next summer because the demand hasn't built back up again. Right. Yeah, and they're also hitting different markets. Last year, they didn't, uh, may, except for maybe Toronto, which I don't know about. They didn't hit Montreal and some of these other shows with the Monster Motley Crue thing. And I know, having spoken to the promoters, they didn't want Kiss and Motley Crue last year. They just thought. We've had too much. There's been an overkill. There was, you know, the year before with Heavy Montreal and the Sonic Boom Tour and the Live 35. The promoter was like, "We're we're all kissed out." No, that, that 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 that's that's a big thing for 
all bands is it's tough yeah. for all bands to have big tours every summer because there's right. no pent up demand for you to come back again. It's like, right. oh, I'll see, him I'll, I'll see him next summer. Oh, I just <laughs> saw them six months ago. Yeah, but I do mean, you think Bon Jovi can do it, but not not, not Kiss. Well, Bon Jovi, I don't know if they're doing it as well right now or not. But 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 back book. back to the original question. So, you know, did did Family Jewels just start happening at the right time where the demand started to come back for Kiss? I I definitely think Family Jewels put them back, not back, put them out there in front okay. of the eyes of everybody. People saw Kiss, heard Kiss. Does that hurt them? I don't think it hurt them at all. Did it totally revitalize their demand and and the market for them to play? No, not 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 at all. Was it a factor? Yes. But do Let you think you that the well, I was just saying. But do you think that the audience has changed? I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is okay. Take Aerosmith for example. Okay, I saw them on the opening show of their tour last summer with with Cheap Trick here in town, and they were they. It was probably the best I'd seen them in 25 years, and um, they were playing a lot of stuff, old and new, but then when they got to some of that garbage that they've recorded, that is the American Idol-ish kind of stuff, I don't even know the names of the songs, you know, all the Aerosmith fans, when you look around the stadium, were just like, oh, Jesus Christ, really? Do you have to play this shit? And then there's always this contingency of girls that are like screaming their heads off because he's doing that slow song. So I'm wondering how much does the KISS audience, has it changed? Are we getting 10, 15, 20% people that wouldn't go and see it normally that are going because of that show, or is that too much? I couldn't guess. There's there's definitely a percentage of people, the casual fan who is just like, oh, that, that's be fun. Let's go, let's go to a KISS concert in a couple months. Um, I don't, know, happen, how, I don't know how big it is, uh, what percentage that would be. You think it had as much impact for for Kiss as the Oz, Osborne show did for Ozzy? No, Osborne's was massive. Right, but I still think it impacted it because I think it brought a lot of people to the table who are going to see the show because he's now Gene being a celebrity on television. But let me ask you about this. You know, Paul has a very good sense of you know business sense and business acumen. If it was really helping Kiss a lot, wouldn't he not have wanted to participate more, knowing? that the end result would have been more kiss, more shows, more money coming in. I mean, Paul Paul essentially boycotted the show. So for all but one episode, really, the wedding. Right. And 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 that one he I guess he sort of had to go, otherwise he would have been seen as you know, bands breaking up that the guy who's been with you for 35 years is not at your wedding, but I don't know. Uh I think some of it is just he thought it was silly, so he just wasn't going to partake in it. And maybe but you don't see. But did he think it was hurting the brand? Oh, could I, you argue that I don't know. I mean, I mean, we can't guess what Paul thinks, obviously. No, but, yeah. no, I, I don't know. I mean, you could there, you could speculate so much on that. I'm just, I guess, back to Tommy's point. I think it he, it it definitely helped. It's not solely responsible. Was it meant to help, or do you think coming in 2006? Remember. The 2004 tour didn't sell that well. 2005, they didn't tour. Do you think Gene was just thinking, okay, this is phase two of my career. I'm going to be a TV star. And then all of a sudden, it sort of snowballed into, hey, Kiss is cool. Let's let's get back to Kiss. I mean, was he trying to sort of get away from Kiss or get out of Kiss and be a TV star? And it, he was any more than he's always tried to be a TV star uh, since the 80s. Yeah, because it might have just been serendipitous that it re reanimated Kiss's career, if it did. I mean, there's other factors, too, that we can look at. You know, like you said, they were away from the road for a while, so there was a demand that, that was built up. Like, hey, where are those guys with the makeup? Uh, they started talking about making a new album. There hadn't been talk of a new album in 11 years, so all of a sudden that's in the press. And it's like, oh, they're making new Walmart, music. What's that gonna Walmart. Walmart. I mean, Walmart. For better or for worse, they did a lot to to affect the Kiss brand. I mean, for a while there, there was Kiss T-shirts and Kiss knickknacks and uh, M and M's and all kinds of stuff when you walked into Walmart stores. So, but you I know, mean, sort of I, I think egg. that's the whole point. All of that added up together right. helps the Kiss brand out there. 
but I'm don't sure, one but, particular item. But I'm not no. saying that. I'm I'm asking, did that was that the first thing that pushed the rock forward that also opened up the door for some of these other things? Because I don't think that Walmart would have necessarily carried Sonic Boom if you didn't have the DVDs and some of the other stuff that they were I, selling. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, who knows I, I how think long they it took that Walmart contract to be worked out. I mean, may, yeah. maybe they were talking to Walmart as far back as when Family Jewels first started, so it wasn't cause yeah, but I think effect. Walmart's marketing plan had nothing to do with Family Jewels. Remember, they had just had success with Journey uh, doing a DVD and CD package, and there was another sort of classic rock band that they had done. Walmart was sort of looking into getting into that a tie-in thing with, with classic rock bands because they'd had that great success with Journey and, and I, God, God, I can't yeah, remember what the other Forner, band was. It was ACDC. Forner. And Forner AC ACDC. Yeah, but, but see, if you look at, but if you look at Journey, yeah, Forner, if you look at, did they, do, did they do an Eagles? Yes, they did. Eagles, Eagles, that, Eagles was actually the first one. Right, Eagles, then Journey. Those were the ones that really got that ball rolling, and then they went out and aggressively got sort of classic rock bands. And Kiss made sense because with the makeup, they knew that means T-shirts, slippers, pillowcases. I mean, See, I don't know if it was that simple. I, I you know, I, Eagles make sense because they're kind of America's band to a certain degree, and you're going to get people coming in there buying, you know, 100 pounds of meat, some toilet paper, and oh, hey, the new Eagles CD. Journey right. makes sense because they're on the radio all the time. ACDC, again, makes sense because they're on the radio all the time. Kiss is not. I think Kiss is a much bigger gamble. And because there it was, was a that bigger presence. Gamble, but visually, yeah. they're everywhere. True, but I think that because of their presence on that show, it was something else to tie it into. I'm not saying that because of that show they got the I don't Walmart know. thing. I mean, you got to remember, the, you know, Kiss Kiss presence on that show was minimal. It was Gene Simmons' presence. But it used to be Gene Simmons of Kiss, and now you can just say Gene Simmons, and everybody knows he is in that band. Right, I think everybody knew before that. I don't know. I mean, did, did Walmart do ad buys on Family Jewels to tie in with Sonic Boom? Did they? I don't. I, I, don't, I don't think I don't so. Think, I, don't I don't think. Know. I've never. Did, I, so. I haven't watched the show, so I've seen a couple of episodes, and that's it. Yeah. So I can't say. I attended the taping of one of those shows, sort of technically, when they came to Montreal. Because okay. I was excited. Yeah. Hmm. But no, um, yeah. I don't know. I think the bottom line is it, it didn't give the same kind of bounce that it did with Ozzy and the Osbournes. And there were a lot of other factors that sort of remade Kiss cool. Like Mike said, they weren't there and, and Walmart and, uh, you know, you know, those to me, a, 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 a marketing branding campaign encompasses more than one thing. I mean, that's the whole it point. You know, there's all these different pieces that upsell and cross sell and cross promote and you know that that's the way it ideally works right i'm just asking if it was maybe one of the first things that helped push the rock forward it, it's it's so hard to say because again you we don't have any insight as to when did negotiations and discussions first start when, we don't. when when did doc or gene pick up the phone to somebody at walmart and say hey We'd love to do something with you. It might have been so early in the Family Jewels world that Family Jewels didn't have an impact on it. Right. Should possible. Paul Stanley have been on it more? Just your, your quick opinion. No. Should Paul Stanley have been on it more? No. I think it was actually cool that he wasn't. Okay. I actually think, and, Kiss, and I think Kiss should have been on it less. I think it should have just been more just Gene Simmons. Not Gene Simmons... At a Kiss show, backstage at Kiss shows. I, I personally think, and I'm, and again, I saw season one, and then I sort of gave up, and I saw spotty episodes, you know, here and there, like you know, there was a day with rain, and I had nothing else to do. But it should have been more about Gene Simmons, the real story, rather than Gene Simmons running around and pretending to buy cow semen and all well, kinds I mean, of that's, other that's nonsense. That's just the normal evolution of all reality t TV. Yeah, it just becomes nonsense. Evolved from reality to back into sitcom. It was right. all scripted. It was scripted, all of that. Mm -hmm. Right, like the Second Coming uh, DVD, by the way. But or, uh, or, or, or more importantly, that that Kisteria special that they did in Australia. Right. That, sorry, that, that oh, whole sorry, that's what that, I meant. That sorry, whole sorry. show was completely scripted. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That, that's what I meant. The, the one, the one where Eric Singer runs off to New Zealand and gets lost. 
Can I sing Beth? Please. Papa Jean. Guys, that was a scripted show. That didn't yeah. happen. Hey, can I just throw one thing out of here completely out of the blue? Gene yeah. Simmons, during that Family Jewels time, had given these interviews saying that, no, I have Family Jewels, and I'm going to have this box set with a thousand songs. Do you think we'll ever see that? That'll ever come out? Um, yeah, if some label steps up and gives him the money. Gives him some money. You don't think he'll put it out by himself and nope. sell it on eBay? Nope. No. And, and what kind and of music do you think would find guy, him? isn't he? Yeah, I, I guess so. What do you think kind of music we'd find on that monster every, every, box? Every demo he's ever written. Yeah. Is that good or bad? It'll be interesting. It'll be eclectic. I'll give you that much. I mean, if it's uh, anything like the Asshole album. You think they'll ever do solo albums again? I think Paul will. I don't think Gene will. If somebody steps up and gives him the money. Well, I don't think that's the case for Paul. I think Paul wants to make an artistic statement and... He'll look for a good deal, but but I don't think money is the maker or breaker for him. Yeah, but I don't see Paul just recording it and releasing it on his own through his own website. No, 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 I don't see that he, either. It, but it, uh, it will get released by somebody stepping up and giving him a deal. Right, but I, I don't think the deal has to be that sweet or that substantial. I think if Universal says, listen, we'll help you get it recorded and we'll put it in our distribution network, I think for Paul that would be good enough. I think Gene... Yeah. My opinion, of course, Gene would would want a lot more. Yeah, and I think that that, that I think that that record deal uh, for him to do solo stuff after they decide not to tour with Kiss anymore is probably there for him. You think? Yeah, I think so. Do you want a Paul Stanley solo album? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, always. Tommy? It just yeah. Except the, the only issue I have, if you look at Live to Win, and I've said this before, is I think the songwriting is really good. Uh, I, the only thing the I don't like is, that it's a production, and again, it's the keyboards and all that kind of stuff. I, I just want a solid rock record, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah it was the execution of the album, but then again, I think the song "Bulletproof" is strong enough that they should repatriate it and somehow make it a Kiss song. Get you know, get Gene's bass on it, put it on the next Kiss album, maybe rekissify it. Because that would sound great live. You know, mm-hmm. armadillo so we'll, we'll bulletproof. See. We want a Tommy Thayer solo album. Depends on who the lead vocalist is. Do we want an Eric Singer? Well, Eric's done a bunch of albums, and they've all been good. Yeah, well, Eric, Eric goes Singer. out and forms bands. I mean, the Eric Singer Project, great, right? Great, great band, fun albums, yeah. um, fun little concert tours. I mean, listen. Would would I want seriously? Would I want a Tommy Thayer album? If he if he put together a cool Tommy Thayer solo project band, mm-hmm. sure. I just don't think he's a lead singer. He shouldn't do. I I don't want him to do the type of stuff Bruce has been doing. Fair enough, but I mean, lead singer wise, when lightning strikes and out of this world, vocally they sound okay. They're they're, they're good songs. And you just described it. They're vocally okay. Yeah, I well, guess I want, would... Don't you want an album that's got a great vocalist? Not an okay. Well, sure. No, and I guess I guess the other thing is, is, do you want 12 songs of okay? No. Um, Maybe one of the songs on his album could be him singing, but I would want him to work with somebody that's a great vocalist that would put together a great band write some great songs, do what he wants. Yeah, that, I, I, Listen, I would certainly check that out. I think that would be interesting. Might, might even be fun to have him uh, get a bunch of vocalists, you know, 10 different vocalists for 10 different songs. That, that could be a, a hoot. Hey, there, you there's know, a good word for I you. That could be a hoot. You, those types hoot, of hoot. albums kind of turn me off. Where yeah. you've got a different vocalist on every every track because it's sort of like... You get to that one, and it's like, oh, I love this. It sounds great, oh, but it's the only one. I got nine others that I don't. Yeah, though I have to say on uh, Slash's albums, <laughs> just to get off topic for a second, he did one album that had a whole bunch of different vocalists, and that's a great album because Slash doesn't know how to pick vocalists. He, pick guy, he picks guys that sound horrible. So to have ten different guys, at least you go, oh, 
Okay, one horrible song, one great song. One horrible song, one great song. I want At a least band. I... <laughs> I want a band is what it comes down to. And, and those types of albums are not bands. Yeah, and, I, right. and Tommy simply doesn't have the time to form a band because people keep, you have to keep reminding people Tommy's more than just a guitarist in Kiss. When he gets off, he's working on Kissology. He's working on Kistory. He's working, he's doing a whole bunch of behind the work stuff that we don't see. I don't think he has any time to put together a band of any kind or make maybe it. Maybe he has, maybe he doesn't want to. Right. True. That too. Gene, do you want another Gene solo album? Why? No. No. I would. I mean, yes and no. If he's right. going to do... Actually, Gene, I would love him to do something with some other musicians. Did you see somewhere that Gene posted that a few years ago he was talking to Tony Iommi about doing a side project band? Mm-hmm. Now, that, that would have been, been interesting. That yeah. I would if give he a does, listen if, to. If he doesn't take it over and wreck it. But, That's but, part of the problem. No, I, 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 I totally get that. You won't know that until it's released. But that type of stuff from Gene would excite me more than Gene singing and just coming up with another asshole part two. The well, other side, the other side of my of. ass. See, that's what I would be scared of. If he came up with another asshole where he just does all this nonsense, sort of no-focused album, that wouldn't fly. But if he gave me, you know, ten larger than lives, that I'd be happy with. And is the, can I throw one more topic out here quickly? Yeah, Bro. sure. We, we had an episode on the producers a while back, and we talked about should they bring in an outside producer. Recently, the new Black Sabbath 13 just came out where Rick Rubin produced it, and he focused them, and it sounds like a Sabbath album. So quickly, I'll just put it back out there for two seconds. Should Kiss get Rick Rubin and yes. do the next record? Yes. Without question, Yes. Yeah, and I mean, because you know, you listen to the interviews with Ozzy, and it's like Rick sat us down, all four of us in a room, and made us listen to the first record, and we went, "Oh, oh, well, we did a that." After we what Rick did with the Sabbath album and the latest ZZ Top album, <laughs> yes, I want him to produce a Kiss album. So him specifically, not just any outside producer. The next Kiss album, Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin. I've said that a and number of story. times. I, I think. He would be a very, very great choice. Okay. Who else does he produce? Because I know nothing about Johnny him. Johnny Cash. Okay. Um, uh, uh, what, are, what are those three country girls? Is it the Dixie Chicks? Oh, I don't okay. know. Yeah, he did those. Yeah. Wickiam, Wickiam. Uh, he's got a quite a. He's got quite a name as a producer. Well, oh yeah, I, he did. You know. He's done all everything. He's done rap, country, metal, death metal, rock, pop. I mean, he's done across the board. Uh, he did Metallica's last album, Death Magnetic which to me was the first sort of really cohesive and great Metallica album since the Black Album. Um, so I, I think that if Kiss is serious about making the next great Kiss record, Rick's the man they got to go to. next or the last. See, and I guess I... The record is, if, if Rick can't save them, then the last. And if it's the, the next greatest record since, you know, the first album then let's go for one more or you or you bring eddie kramer back i like what he's done and plus two the other one i would choose honestly and i know i'm going to get reamed for this i don't care butch vig that's who i'd pick just to see if it would work what's butch done um all the nirvanas foo fighters Mind. he's he would have been perfect for carnival of souls yeah, no, um, I know, but he's. But what I like about it is, is when he's doing the stuff with garbage. This sonically, the sound of those records is just something I've never heard before. And so I'm curious to see what he can do. You should buy more records. You should I buy. Don't. You should buy ZZ Top and Black Sabbath and listen to the sound. See, I don't that, like either one of those bands. But but so so don't listen to them because you like them. Listen to it for the sound. The guitars yeah. on that ZZ Top album. Are the nastiest, dirtiest, crunchiest, grimiest guitar sound I've ever heard. Really? Yeah. Okay. It was just well, like, I'll give it a wow. shot. I just, yeah. you know. And let's throw one thing out there with Rick. You know, he came in on the Sabbath record, and Sabbath has a touring drummer. They had Tommy Clefetto. They also had Bill Ward. And he brought in a whole new guy. If he came into the Kiss camp and he said, 
I'm not sure this Tommy guy works. I'm gonna bring in my own guitarist. So he brings in Ace. <laughs> <laughs> brings I in mean, Vinny. Yeah. Do you yeah. think? Do you think Kiss would go for that? And then do you think? I mean, would you be like, listen, whatever. Rick wants, I'm good with. He wants to change Tommy, that, fine. That, that, that turns this whole producer discussion into a much deeper discussion. No, but personally, would you care? If it turns out to deliver a great Kiss record, I don't care. Okay, well, that's the answer. Tommy? You care about Tommy? Tommy? I'm. It doesn't matter to me. I would just like a really good Kiss record, and so I'm not saying that Rick Rubin isn't the right guy for the job. I, it, you know, But just because he did it with these two bands he's probably got a good shot that he can do it with kiss but who knows i mean they have to also be willing participants well, that's, in this. that's a big part of this discussion is doesn't matter if if gene and paul aren't going to listen to anybody else i i'm i'm just saying assuming they would assuming they play they turn the themselves over and and let this guy direct them yeah rick rubin if they're not going to do that it doesn't matter why waste your money on any producer Right. Well, and yeah, and and you know, I, I don't know if they understand. The, the interesting thing you said though with, with Rick Rubin is, is that if that's indeed true, where he made the sa made Sabbath sit down and listen to their first record, um, you know, that's probably a really smart move because I just think that at a certain point these bands just become detached from what their past is. Right. So if there's a way that you can reach to reach them. Every you know. band that I like that has been produced by Rick Rubin tells the same tale. You know, Metallica did the same thing. He said, oh, before Death Magnetic, he sat us down and he made us listen to Kill Em All and Master of Puppets and said, that's Metallica music. That's what we're going to do here. And apparently, listen, I've seen interviews with Tony, Geezer, and Ozzy, and I even heard them on the Howard Stern show. They said, Rick sat us down, so... Do I know if it's true as a fact because I was there? No, but according to all the interviews, that's his modus operandi. That's what he does. He gets the bands in and goes, this is what you know you sound like. This is your sound. That's smart. So so just uh, let me run down. Here's a, I'm looking at his wiki production list, and it's, it's crazy. a long-ass crazy list. But you're talking Metallica, um, Black Sabbath, ZZ Top, Linkin Park, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Kid Rock. Um, Adele, he did Adele's Twenty One. Wow! But see, um, right there, that that Johnny gives Cash, me, Slayer. Okay, but that that right there encourages me more simply not because of Adele per se, but hearing Red, Red Hot Chili Peppers again. There's a a newer groove to it too, so we can maybe also modernize it, but yet keep it classic. You too, right. Justin Timberlake, uh, Slipknot, Weezer, System of a Down. Um, you keep going. I mean, it, Shakira, it's... Dixie Chicks, yes, Slayer, mm -hmm. um, Wham, Audio Slave. That Aerosmith. first Audio Slave apparently was was fantastic. I don't think anything came out of the Rick Rubin Aerosmith uh, AC, collaboration. ACDC, yeah. Tom Petty, you know, Joan Jett. His pedigree is large, and what I like about it is that it's not just one genre. He's all over the place, and therefore he can have an understanding of what makes a good country song, what makes a good pop song, See, what makes, and then eventually what makes a good Kiss song. I agree. Anyway, I just brought. I just want. I know we talked about producers before, but I just wanted to bring that up because I think the Sabbath record sounds like a Sabbath record, and. You know, does Kiss need to go that route to get a Kiss record that sounds like a Kiss record? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think so. Yep. You so, what's your man? Mitch. Yes, sir. Do you have your product ready for today? The only product I had was this, my, my tribute, my mastered tribute, because that was really important to me. Do you mean I still got to sit here and play with my little Kinectics? Toys since Mitch yes. didn't bring his toys to show off. No, no, this I is thought we were doing a segment, man. This is Aww. supposed to be Mitch's segment. But Every this is week, the dude. exciting thing. It's no, the that tribute. was a feature story. Yeah. Oh my lord. Come on. Really? Oh my god. Are we gonna Tommy, are we gonna have to yank this feature? I think so. No, but that this was the exciting thing. Oh, Gene. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> I could pull out the letter that Gene Simmons sent me when I was a kid. I could go get it downstairs. I still have that. Oh, but I know what I could show you. 
right back here. Hold on. This is great. Eat. Oh, I stuck it in a, I stuck it in a sealed bag. Hold on a second. Uh oh, dead body. <laughs> this. It's Vinnie Vincent. Does this look familiar, Tommy? That looks very familiar. It is. Would you like to explain what it is? Um, that is an That's an original press kit photo for the right. release of Psycho Circus. Right. Correct. You're right. Tommy yeah. sent me all this, all these great things. This goodie bag of Kiss trinkets because he wanted to help out with raising funds for the uh, tribute album, and so. I'm going to sort through this, which is why, by the way, it's such an it's in such close proximity. And we're going to put these up on eBay, or if somebody sees this on the podcast and wants to, you know, send an offer in before we get to eBay, be more than happy to uh, to entertain that. I'm just trying to see if there's any more Kiss stuff. Uh, here, here's a good one. What is this exactly? That's an original Teen Star from the '70s. Poster it's got magazine. two two yeah, it's a poster magazine. I got one of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so and this stuff all comes out of my collection, and there's also an autograph by the original Vince Neil band. So if you guys want something that came right from my my stuff, yeah. so if you want that, it's um, what else? I don't even remember what else I put in there for you. Well, you put stuff also in here that had nothing to do with Kiss. You put in an Alan uh, Mekin signed oh, Pocahontas Mekin. DVD. Uh, you gave me the Rush tour book signed by all the guys in Rush. Oh, that might be one you want to might want to show people, if you yeah, got, if you can get at it. Yeah, this yeah, is an original. Right. Yeah, it's an original tour book from the Moving Pictures tour with all three guys autographing the inside of the tour book. So I if you know of any, that. if you know any Rush fans, um, this is the real deal and would be a great thing for their collection. Now, hold on, I haven't because we're trying to raise money for. The uh, hospice. Where, where are the autographs? It's like probably three or four oh, pages there they are. in. Yeah. There they are. I don't know if you can uh, see it. Yeah. Can you see them? Yeah. Hold on, yep. I can't. I can't see my screen right now. There. Yeah, you're right so on. Those are the autographs by the guys, and uh, you know, should I should I throw these up on eBay first, or should I give these our our Kiss podcast fans a chance to instant message me it. and make eBay yeah. it? That way, you got the best chance of raising the most for charity. Yep. But don't yeah, put them up I'm, until. But put them up next Tuesday, so that people next Wednesday. Yeah, get a chance. Yeah. To, okay, fair enough. I'll give I'll give people a little uh, heads up, and and you can see it's original. Tommy was kind enough to donate that. The money that's going to be raised here, none of it goes to me. None of it goes to Tommy. We're not splitting anything. It's going to go over to the hospice as a cash donation. It all goes yep. to Gene. No, it goes to. Uh, we, Richard, we got to do something to raise money to pay our licensing fee. Oh, that's right, the licensing fee. Hey, I just sent a it's huge that. check huge. to uh, mechanic to pay for the mechanicals for this tribute CD. So it was over three thousand dollars of mechanicals, believe it or well, not. That'll buy Gene a lot of cupcakes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Twinkies are no longer around. No, they're coming back. Oh, they are. Yeah, I yes. think they're going to be back in like ten days or something. I read. Yeah. Did somebody well, buy the hostess so, thing? Yep. So all you fools who, when they disappeared, went on eBay and bought Twinkies for like five hundred dollars. Wah wah. God. Hmm. That's like all us fools who bought the Kiss box set when it oh, first came out. It was a hundred bucks, and now you can get it for thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Do you know that there's a special? Canadian edition of Monster that's been released? Say what? <laughs> now he got his attention. There has been a special Canadian version of Monster that's been released. What's on it? What's the special about it? The exact same thing as the German one, except it's got a regular logo. Oh, I bought that in the UK. The UK had a version that was like that with the regular logo. But there's I can one, show you. There's one. Somebody, I think somebody posted either on, uh, might have been one of the posts that somebody made on Three Sides of the Coin. They showed a picture saying they just picked up the Canadian edition, Monster Tour edition. Well, oh, Kiss covers well, up happen. Canada. You, you know what? What's, what's The great thing about CDs these days is they're like eight bucks or nine bucks. So you can buy a couple of multiple versions. 
you know, back in the day when you were spending twenty four ninety nine to get a single Bon Jovi disc, buying two or three was a little bit cost prohibitive. So next week, I expect you to report back on where you found the special Canadian tour edition. Yeah, you know what? I'm going over to uh, Ontario tomorrow, and they have a Walmart on the way. I'll 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 stop in and have a look. I bet they might be for sale at the Kiss pop up stores. Which are not coming to Quebec for any for some reason. The Montreal gig doesn't get the kids. I think pop they would have store. done it just because they knew Mitch was there. Yeah, they well, put him there. I know in Quebec they have language laws that when you sell stuff that has it has to be translated into French or it's you not can't legal. Can't say the word kiss in French. Le kiss. So yeah, Lebec. Lebec. But no, uh, why did I do that? But um, <laughs> fuck. Uh, that's going to be the bumper, isn't it? <laughs> it's Keith. Uh. Don't worry. But uh, like yeah, they're said, not no, doing it no in Montreal. Around. The good thing is that uh, I'm seeing the band in Ottawa night. and in Verona, New York. So I'm sure I'll find a Kiss pop-up store somewhere. You got to go to Toronto. You're going to make the drive? Or Vancouver? Um, no. No. Vancouver is a little too far. Why? Make sure you get pictures of yourself standing next to it. You know, if you flew to Vancouver, you could do it as a tax write-off as a business expense for the show. Oh, there you go. That's not a bad idea, actually. Mm-hmm. Can I write off all these Kiss uh, CD mastering uh, things? God, what a fortune this has been. But, uh, you know, as of today, though, even though the album's not released, $3,000 has been raised for the charity, and that's pre-release. I mean, obviously, as, as the album gets released, more will come in, but that's a pre-release figure that can be turned over. So, that's great. Tommy, do we wrap this up before the train wreck hits again? Yeah, uh, that's, oh, that's by the way, I want to... the train wrecks. I want to apologize to everybody for last week. You know, but surprisingly, the early results are people are loving it again. <laughs> really? They must really be bored at work. <laughs> I don't... I don't. You're there, there, there was, there was one or two comments that they were like, it could have used a little more editing, or this one kind of lost its focus. But for the most part, they were, love the show again. You guys are great. Oh, Lord. Hmm. What they're We're really trying to saying improve. Is Mitch was awesome. There was Carrie somebody who flat out said, "We gotta fire Mitch." <laughs> <laughs> you two shouldn't post that stuff publicly. That was your mom again. <laughs> I know. She wants me to spend more time with her. Exactly. Uh, that must be what it is. We love reading the comments, though. Seriously, leave yeah. your, just funny, though. Leave your comments on iTunes, on Facebook, and YouTube. We love reading them. Good or bad. Good or bad. Well, Tom's it's personal long. Facebook page. Yeah. With all it's your lo- comments. As long as they're not hateful towards other people. Hateful, That's the only thing I don't like. Racial slurs, um, that type That's the of stuff. That's thing. Yeah. I, I, I will delete. Mm-hmm. As you should. Yeah. You know? But if you We're say all- we should fire Mitch, I leave that up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Especially if one of you decides, hey, I think I should start a petition. <laughs> petition the White House. Yeah. Oh, Wouldn't that be good... funny if we got enough? What do you got to get, 25,000 signatures for the White House to actually look at and consider a petition? Yeah. Wouldn't that be funny if we got 25,000 signatures to petition the White House to fire Mitch from the show? Then they'd realize he's Canadian and we can't do anything about it, so... Fire the Canadian from a job that doesn't pay, therefore not actually a job. I just would love the fact that Obama would have to look at a petition that mentions three sides of the coin. We should petition (laughs) Obama to get Kiss into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now there you'll get 25,000 signatures. Or the White House. I don't think he cares. But if you get 25,000 signatures, he'll have to care. And with that, good night. Mm-hmm. Homework. And thank you for watching. Oh, homework? You want more? Um, I think I'd like to go back to, to the... Head over to pledgemusic.com and pick up this soon-to-be mastered C... Well, it actually is mastered. That's but that's homework. not the homework. That's just something that they all should do. That's your gene sentence Don't plot. share it on torrent sites. It's for charity. Mm-hmm. Quiet. Tommy had something to say. Well, I know. I was just thinking maybe we. I'd like to go back to the family jewels thing and talk, have people voice their opinion on what type of impact do you think that truly had on the rebuilding of the brand? 
unless you guys have something better. No, that's um, good. I'm just waiting for the post that say, stop talking about brand. Kiss is a band. Band. No, they're not. They're a brand. Yeah. Or we could have everybody talk about a Tommy Thayer solo album. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, what color would it be? No, oh, but I mean, you Would know, you buy huh? a Tommy Thayer solo album? And what would you want on it? Should Tommy sing? I know Should what Tommy John Davies answer I was be? just going to say, John, oh, he's going to go nuts. <laughs> I'll save you the post, John. You write no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> go, John. <laughs> I look forward to his comments, though, truly. I seriously do, too. He's a hell guy. He really is. He's good. I like all the comments, the good and the bad. Either mm -hmm. you giggle or you cry, but either way, it's good. It's fun. Mm -hmm. And, an and seriously, if the guy who said we jumped the shark is watching this again, why are you watching? I want to know why did we jump the shark? Yeah. What did we do yeah. that jumped the shark? Maybe that's I'm, the other. I'm baffled at the people who think the Andy show sucked because it had nothing to do with Kiss. It had everything to do with Kiss. Yes. I had told a couple, I'm like, go back and listen to it. I think we mentioned Kiss a few times in there. Well, There's maybe that's part of the homework is it should be, have we jumped the shark? But you have to tell us why we jumped the shark. Right. I'm still curious to know from the fans, who should we have as guests? If Andy wasn't a, a bad guest, and I don't believe that, then who do they suggest we should bring on as guests? Well, guest? I had one, one guy who suggested he would have been a better guest. Well, I don't know. Can you Skype at Denny's? Oh, I should tell you, one one of these guys who was who was upset because he didn't get the show, then turned around and got mad at at the three of us because he said we're too old to understand. Well, he's right. I am old, and I don't care to understand. No, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm just curious to know who they like as guests. I mean, they liked Kevin Valentine. They liked Ed Cannon. They liked Bruce Kulik. I mean, should we start going down that path and we get anybody who's been in a, in a band? Or, you know, where, where do we go? You know? They yeah, liked Todd I, Howarth when we put him over on Dropping the Needle. The Kiss fans went over there and, and found Dana that interesting. How about Dana Strum? Dana would be very interesting. I speak to Dana all the time. I could, I could call him up and get him on here. I think that's about as close as we're ever going to get to having Vinnie Vincent on this show. Yeah. I could email Mark Slaughter, though I don't know if he'd do it. Dana probably would. He doesn't give a rat's ass about people's opinions about him. He'll tell you. He'll tell that's, you. That's the exactly truth. what we want on this show. Dana Dana is a fan, fantastic person. Because none I mean, of I know us metal, give a rat's ass about people's opinions about us. Yeah, I mean, I know on Metal Sludge they've made fun of him for years, but Dana's an absolute. True gentleman. I mean, and, and he's no bullshit either. He's, right, he's so, fantastic. So amongst all the other suggested homeworks, you could also answer, would Dana Strum be a, an interesting guest? Yeah. He's great. So, then is great it, it, so if that does that mean that if out of 100 people, 51 say yes, we have him on, or 51 say no, we don't? No, it means that it doesn't matter how many say yes or no. We're going to do it whether we want to or not. Perfect. Okay, that's what I was looking for. It's our show. <laughs> we just want to yeah. know. We want discussion. We want talking. But at the end of the day, we're going to do what we want. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind. I want Dana. Do you want Dana, Tommy? I do. Um, I'd like to have him as a guest on the show. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's an uh, uh, and Mitch I, does, I, so, so there you go. I mean, we want Dana Strom on the show, whether you don't want him or not. Yeah. I think yeah. fans would. I think, I think he'd bring an interesting perspective because, mm -hmm. you know, with Todd Howarth, we got a little bit of what it was like to be in Ace's world, and with Frank Munoz, we got that, and with Kevin and all that, we sort of got inside all these worlds. We've never been inside Vinny's world. We've said things, we've commented about things, but we've never really gotten a little bit of perspective maybe we'll get an inside Vinny's rubber tupperware container world yeah hairy dogs and all <laughs> jesus <sighs> whatever and with that good night good night say that's goodbye that's it you know where to go leave us your comments 
tell us that this wasn't quite the train wreck. It doesn't feel like we wrecked this one. No, no last week was awful. Should we fire Tommy? Maybe so. That ain't gonna happen. People love Tommy. <laughs> yeah. They love the international rock reporter. Oh, Tommy! Before we sign off, I was just before we started. Somebody did last week. Did you make a comment about Bob Dylan? Bob with Dylan. Andy's show or last week? Somebody said you need to listen to more Bob Dylan. Oh, I listened to plenty of it growing up because my brother likes him, and my sister's actually going to see him this summer. And, and, and I replied, nobody needs to listen to more Bob Dylan. <laughs> Thank you. Bob Dylan to <laughs> me I is like... got slammed. <laughs> right, of course. Well, and here's the thing about Bob Dylan, okay? Bob Dylan, I think, is an incredible songwriter, but he should not be performing his own music. That's my issue. So when you hear other artists like um, Cheryl Crow cover that song Mississippi, which he wrote for her, brilliant song. So he's well, really Rose got is knocking on heaven's door. Yeah, he's got the talent. He just shouldn't be doing it himself. It's like Neil Diamond too. Ugh. So I don't think listening to more Dylan is okay, going to help. I was me. just trying to. I couldn't remember where where Bob Dylan was discussed, and this guy was very specific about Tommy needs to listen to more Bob Dylan. I was just like. It's not that I don't like him. It's just it's not for me. And I get so tired of the of the people in my sister and brother's generation who go on and on about how he is a poet and he you know spoke for the generation. Great. Well, like I said before, he didn't speak for my generation. David Hold on. Rowe. You want to hear poetry, Mike? Burn, bitch, burn. Give me those lyrics. Let me stick my log in your fireplace. That is Frickin' poetry right there, That's boys and girls. That's poetry for the 80s generation. Yes, and if we're going to tie Bob Dylan back to Kiss, Scott Hall, who mastered this at Master Disc, also worked on Bob Dylan's album. Right. And now he's done a Kiss tribute album. Yeah, Get like I said, he's not bad. I'm not, not dissing Bob. It's just it's not my kind of music. But he does sound better sung by Guns N' Roses or whoever. Well, yeah, I just that's what it is. It's the production, and I'm not a fan of his. You, know. okay. you got it uh, all night. You got it uh, all night. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Let's sign off. Sure, that's that's it. Good, Thank you, guys. That's it. No this more. What's a deuce? What's a deuce? <laughs> Bye.